Since the Naju Youth Retreat, my days have been filled with happiness. I had severe panic disorder, but now I don't need medication anymore. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to the Blessed Mother. I'd like to begin by sharing the significant grace I received while making pilgrimages to Naju. Between the ages of 21 and 23, I suffered severely from panic disorder. After returning from the military, I struggled with intense trauma from my childhood. Because of this, I could never keep a part-time job for more than a month, had difficulty with social interactions, and couldn't go out without medication. I even attempted suicide. While making pilgrimages to Naju, I didn't visit often when my panic disorder flared up, and during that time, I arbitrarily stopped taking my medication more than four times. However, psychiatric medications can cause severe withdrawal symptoms if discontinued abruptly, which made it difficult for me. After some time, I resumed my pilgrimages to Naju, and a few months later, I suddenly felt confident that I could stop taking the medication. Since then, from the age of 23 until now at 25, I haven't experienced any panic disorder symptoms or taken any medication. I had also gained weight due to the side effects of the medication, reaching 97 kilograms, but now I've lost weight down to 73 kilograms. I'd like to share the grace I received during this recent youth retreat. Before attending, I faced many obstacles. The first day of the retreat was a Friday, and I had to go to work because of my part-time job. I was unusually irritated and sensitive that day, and I didn't want to go. To make matters worse, as soon as I arrived at work, a customer made an unreasonable request, which added to my stress, and a colleague also made things difficult for me. That colleague often hurt me with his words, making it very difficult for me, and that day, I didn't even want to talk to him. Toward the end of my shift, I was told to organize the basement storage, and I had to sort items for an upcoming event. Since there aren't many men at my workplace, I usually have to handle the heavy lifting, and that day, I had to move a very large canopy. Unfortunately, it fell on my left wrist. I have a tendon issue in my left wrist, so I usually wear a wrist protector with all signs of grace of Naju while working and exercising. But that day, I removed the protector because I didn't want it to get dirty. As a result, my left wrist bore the full weight of the canopy, causing a lot of pain. In that moment, I prayed, Lord and blessed mother, may you be praised and glorified. Afterward, I applied a pain relief patch and ice to my wrist, but the pain was so intense that even though I tried to offer it up, I became frustrated and thought, I'll just go tomorrow. So, I canceled my bus ticket. When I told the Naji sister about it, she suggested that I come with someone who was arriving later that afternoon. I responded with Amen and rebooked my ticket. After finishing work, I boarded the bus heading to Guangzhou. I was exhausted from the busy day and all the incidents, so I fell asleep immediately. When I woke up, we were at the terminal. However, the bus driver announced, we've arrived in Sunchen. Confused, I asked the driver about it, and he confirmed that we were indeed in Sunchen, not Guangzhou, and that the last bus to Guangzhou had already left. It turned out that this was the first time in the driver's career that he hadn't checked tickets, and I was the one who ended up on the wrong bus. Tears welled up in my eyes, and I thought, I should have just come tomorrow. But then, out of nowhere, someone at the information desk said, there's an extra bus going to Guangzhou. You can take it. So, it ended up being just me and an elderly man on the bus, and we made it to Guangzhou. When I arrived, Brother Don Bosco and Matthew had waited an hour for me, which allowed me to make it to Naju. I was on the verge of being stranded and possibly having to spend the night outdoors, but the Blessed Mother safely guided me, providing a bus to Guangzhou and arranging a comfortable ride to the retreat with a fellow participant. I am grateful to Mama Julia, who I believe has been praying for each retreat participant at every moment. So, the second day of the Naju youth retreat arrived. I usually prefer to stay in the background and not take on any prominent roles within the group. However, given my current employment issues and desire for inner peace, I responded with Amen and committed to participating fully. I followed all the tasks assigned by the religious brothers, did the reading at the Holy Mass, and during the Stations of the Cross, I even carried the cross for the first time in Naju. 
Although my wrist was extremely painful, I firmly believed that the Lord would heal me. After completing the Stations of the Cross and receiving the Sacrament of Reconciliation, I drew a message card and spent some time in meditation in the Adoration Chapel of the Precious Blood. From the moment I went to confession, tears started flowing and didn't stop. The message of love on the card was from the Blessed Mother, given on December 14, 1992. My beloved children, come to me in a hurry and entrust yourselves to me completely with faith and trust. I, your heavenly mother, will be with you always. I am mother to all of you. In that moment, I felt a profound sense of the Blessed Mother's presence and warmth beside me. Afterward, we had a time with Mama Julia. Despite her severe suffering that day, Mama Julia generously spent a long meeting time with us individually. She anointed each one of us. And when it was my turn to receive the anointing, I was overcome with emotion and filled with a profound sense of happiness. During her inspiring spiritual message, I sat right in front of Mama Julia, holding onto the hem of her skirt as I listened. The message she gave was, let us not look back and do our best. She also said, I will take responsibility for you to go to heaven as long as you don't turn away. I was deeply grateful for these words and felt a profound sense of remorse for the life I've lived up to that point. Mama Julia embraced us with all her heart until the very moment she left. At that time, I also felt a renewed sense of, I can do it. After the retreat ended, I returned home with a joyful heart and each day since has been filled with happiness. On the bus ride home, I realized that the pain in my arm, which had caused me to keep applying patches and holding my wrist during the retreat, had completely disappeared. Additionally, a colleague who had often hurt me with his words treated me with kindness and took great care of me after the retreat. After the retreat, I faced many challenges, including temptations and difficulties in relationships. However, on the third day of the retreat, during a priest's homily, he said, even if you don't receive all the graces you desire from this retreat, you can always come back to Naju again and again. This message stayed with me and it inspired me to come back with faith on this first Saturday. Today, during the 15th station of the cross, I carried the cross and when I placed my feet on the altar of the resurrected Jesus, I felt a deep sense of remorse for my faults and experienced the love of Jesus, which brought me comfort. Tears flowed uncontrollably and now my heart feels at peace. I give glory to the Lord and the Blessed Mother for all these graces. Thank you.